I've just come out of the session with Angela Merkel, German Chancellor, who was speaking just at the very moment the European Central Bank was announcing its policy on quantitative easing. We now know what the ECB has done. It's decided to pump a large amount of money, 60 billion euros a month, into the Eurozone economy by buying public and private sector assets until at least September 2016. Now, Frau Merkel was speaking in, really in the knowledge that something had happened. She wasn't necessarily sure exactly what had happened, but she stressed that just as Germany had always respected the independence of the Bundesbank, it respected the independence of the European Central Bank, and she supported its actions. Now, she did say that you shouldn't just look at this as the main policy, that it was very, very important to think about structural reforms and public and private investment, as well as actions to stimulate the economy through monetary policy. And I think this is where we sort of get an idea of where Europe is going, what it's trying to do to make sure its economy gets out of deflation and growth starts picking up rather stronger. It's going to have a policy of structural reforms. Frau Merkel praised Italy and said France is beginning to reform itself, praised Spain, praised Ireland, and said that with these policies and more investment, Europe can really move forward. But I think there is our two criticisms that are still applying to Europe which haven't been solved. One is the US criticism which we heard very forcefully this morning from people like Larry Summers, the former Treasury Secretary. He said all these things are necessary and good, the ECB's action is really an important thing, but they're not enough. It's not a sufficient condition to get Europe really motoring again. And then there's the European worry, which I think is really at, strikes at the heart of most European policymakers. It is that they say two things are still lacking in Europe, and without those, you can't get a vibrant recovery. And those two things are both trust and confidence. And there was really an appeal at a lunch I was at for more trust in policymakers and then policymakers to really go out and sell Europe to the world so that you get more confidence. And without that, Europe wouldn't recover very well.